Another big story tonight is Washington's primary race. It's one that's being watched very closely around the country, in part to get a feel for the mood of the Republican Party. Nine people ran for the seat in Congress that represents Southwest Washington. Jamie Herrera Butler has held that seat since 2010, and she's running again. But two Republicans put up strong campaigns. Joe Kent and Heidi St. John claimed Herrera Butler betrayed Southwest Washington and Republicans when she voted to impeach former President Donald Trump last year after the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. So both Kent and St. John are big Trump supporters. Kent was even endorsed by him. And here are the latest numbers as counties report their updated totals this evening. Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez has advanced to the general election with 32% of the vote. The Associated Press, in fact, called her as a winner there just about 20 minutes ago. But keep an eye on that important second place position, which has not officially been called yet. Right now, Jamie Herrera Butler has about a three point buffer from Joe Kent, who's right behind her. If that holds, Herrera Butler will advance to the general election. Remember, the top two candidates will face off in November, regardless of political party. Heidi St. John is in fourth place with 15% of the vote. Now, we talked to Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez last night. She raised far less money than any of the top three Republican candidates. But as of tonight, she is leading that race in a district that typically votes Republican. Right now, it's really less about Southwest Washington going blue, though, than it is about the Republicans splitting the vote because 59% of the votes are going to Republican candidates right now. But Glusenkamp Perez says Southwest Washington has a lot of Democrats, and she thinks voters in this region will switch things up come November. Well, I mean, what a relief to see that voters are showing up. They are not falling for these big money lies that are coming through. Um, they are showing up for election integrity. They are showing up for women's rights. And they are showing up for small business owners working the trades like me. I'm really fortunate that I haven't had to play games with my electorate. I can just be who I am and have a clear message of what we're bringing to the table, which is a real commitment to real family wage jobs to ensuring women's access to most fundamental rights, some of the most critical things that are being trampled on in, in, this, uh, in, in this climate. Incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler says she's optimistic she can hold on to her seat and that she thinks voters will continue supporting her because of her record over the past 12 years in office. I remain cautiously optimistic. Obviously, we're, we are not done. Um, you know, we ran through the tape, but what appears right now, what I appear to see is that folks are very interested in making sure that whoever represents Southwest Washington is focused here on Southwest Washington. And that's um, been kind of my mainstay in this district. So very um, pleased to, to be looking at the top two right now, hoping this holds and I get to move on to November. I've never walked into these saying I'm confident because I think the moment you get cocky is the moment voters bring it, <laughs> bring a course correction. But I, I, if I get through this, um, I'll take the, I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna be a different person. I've been the same person in the last few races and that's the same tact I will take. No one will work harder for this district than I will, bar none. Voter turnout has been really high for this election. Clark County's auditor told us he expects it to top 40%, which is high for a primary and really could signal a shift in attitudes ahead of the midterm election. Here's Republican political strategist Rebecca Tweed. It's really the first competitive campaign that, you know, Congresswoman Herrera Butler has had. And as a six-term incumbent, to, to be this vulnerable in a race right now, is surprising traditionally, but not really surprising when you look at what's happening nationally. And you look at the campaign that, you know, Joe Kent and Heidi St. John ran, you know, they ran far to the right and middle to the right to appeal to those voters. Um, you know, if you had taken out a few of the Republican candidates, I think the breakdown would still be the same of who's leading. Um, but, you know, Joe Kent really got a lot of momentum for uh, a candidate taking on an incumbent. And I think that's a really interesting message that, you know, Republicans need to be aware of, especially, Repu you know, Republican incumbents uh, to just kind of see that energy that we were expecting, we thought might happen, weren't sure how candidates would do that were, you know, running that campaign strategy. And he's made a name for himself and, and Heidi St. John has as well.
you know, for Washington and for CD3 to have such a competitive campaign and to really put an incumbent on notice, that's a message for campaigns going into November in other states for Republicans to figure out where they're going to position themselves and for grassroots candidates who are maybe opposed to the Republicans that have moved a little to the right, they're probably more and more energized. So really watching that energy, you know, for strategists like me and campaign folks, that's really a daily movement. So now more than ever, I think what's happening tonight in Washington is really setting the tone that folks need to be paying attention to. And voters are either going to be very protective of the candidates they support or probably more encouraged and more engaged to to try to unseat them in November. November is not very far away. Um, so this energy is going to carry strong. And I really think tonight's results send a message. OK, so you might think now that the primary is over, can we please get a break from all the political ads, the mailers, the phone calls, the text messages? The short answer is no. The general election is only three months away now, so you can expect a lot more of those. And we know you are sick of it. Many of you are. And we wondered, does it even make a difference in the election? What kind of strategy is it? I asked Rebecca Tweed about that. Let's talk a little bit about strategy, because while we have been talking, I have gotten at least two text messages on the congressional race here in southwest Washington. They drive me bonkers. Um, I'm getting them all the time. It feels like is this an effective strategy to send these spam text messages? I can't recall a time where I had more text messages from candidates than now. Well, let me just first say none of them are for me or my firm. <laughs> Um, you know, I it, it really is an effective strategy. Um, and, you know, especially when you can vote by mail, right? The majority of voters make their decisions in the, either the first 36 hours or the last 36 hours. So a number of folks are, are really sitting there catching that one last ad. They're going back through their voters pamphlet statement. Um, and, and it can be annoying to be communicated with, but a majority of the time we find that it doesn't really change enough voters' minds if they're annoyed. What they do remember is the candidate's name. Or you get a large percentage of folks that don't get all of those messages, right? Some voters get them because they're on a lot of lists or they vote frequently. Some people get them just because they've contributed before and so they get text messages for raising money and they give. Um, it, it's a lot, believe me, it's a lot. Uh, but it really does have an impact now, I do think it could be dialed back a little bit. I, I feel the same way, although I kind of nerd out about getting all of them and I save them for either to do's or not to do's when I run my own campaigns. Um, but yeah, you know, the more voters hear from you, the more likely you are to, you know, be memorable and, and have an opportunity to send a message. So it's really that name recognition is what sticks with people, even if they're annoyed. Yeah, right. Yeah, so get ready for more of that. All right.